Welcome to the Giving Voice to Depression podcast. We're your co-hosts, Bridget and Terry. Each week, we explore a different perspective on or experience of depression because it varies in form and severity, affecting us differently. Our guests share intimate details of their struggles, coping strategies, and recovery. We keep it real because the struggle is real. We keep it hopeful because there is hope in spite of what depression tells you. We're not experts or therapists. We're sisters and best friends who live with depression and know that talking about the illness reduces stigma and humanizes the experience, making it safer and easier to ask for needed support. You are far from alone. Today's podcast is sponsored with a Garrett Kelly Memorial Grant from the Charles E. Kubley Foundation in loving memory of Garrett and others who've struggled with depression. We are solely responsible for podcast content. Hey, Terry. Hi, Bridget. When we recently read an article in Psychology Today about depression and artistic expression, one of the people quoted is author Eric Maisel, who in his book, Van Gogh Blues, proclaimed that virtually 100% of creative people suffer from bouts of depression. Hmm. Several reasons for this are explored including claims that the experience of depression provides valuable subject matter for artistic creations, and that artists cannot truly understand and artistically express the human condition unless they have experienced the lowest of the emotional lows. Hmm. A favorite quote from that article was from actress Stella Adler, and it said, Life beats down and crushes the soul, and art reminds you that you have one. Mm. Right? Our guest today is creating art that reminds us that depression is multifaceted, devious, and powerful. Jeff Beyer first wrote us in December to say that his art was changing and darkening as his mental health did. He was concerned how his pieces would be received when unveiled in an upcoming show. Jeff wrote, The weight of this had to end up somewhere. It's fitting that I can express in these paintings what I am too afraid or embarrassed to speak out loud about. We checked back after the show to ask how it had gone. Jeff's response was, it was phenomenal. (laughs) I had complete strangers break down crying and hugging and sharing their own struggles. Happy to share more with you anytime. Kind regards, Jeff. Well, he didn't have to offer twice. Here's Jeff giving his voice to depression. Hello? Jeff, this is Terry. How are you? I'm good, Terry. How are you today? Good. I think this is the, f- the fastest it's ever gone from, yeah, we should talk to, we're talking. Well, it's just a perfect window of opportunity, so it must have been meant to be. I love seizing those. Yeah. So start by telling me a bit about yourself, if you would. Um, well, my name is Jeff, and I live in British Columbia, Canada. And I've painted for 16 years. So your earlier paintings, you described as happy. Mm-hmm. And when I looked, they were literally flowers and trees and butterflies. Yeah. I assumed they gave a similar sense of joy to the people looking at or purchasing them as they did to you to make them. I think so. That's certainly how, uh, how I felt it. I was very fortunate. Uh, a gallery picked me up quite, quite fast into my career and uh, then a few other galleries, and I was able to uh, develop my craft because of those flowers. But there was, there was something missing. I hadn't really said anything for years. It was just comfortable and safe. And then they started to change, and is that when you started to say something, or is that when you started to feel something, or both? Um, well... I think for for the first years that I was painting, uh, art was a, a, an incredible therapeutic tool for me to deal with my own mental health issues, to distract myself or to channel uh, feelings, to divert certain episodes or times that might have been darker. And I was able to lose myself immersed in the art. And then one day I was going through a very dark period. And and the first piece in that last series came out. So tell me about that piece and, and what it looked like and what it was about for you. 
Well, the first piece is, as you know, is a hand reaching up and there are black balloons floating high above it. And people have interpreted that many ways. A lot of people said that they saw the release of these black balloons, the release uh, of feelings or depression or anxiety or past or mistakes or regret. And then there were a few people who said, which I would say is maybe more my own intention in it, of still reaching for them even when you don't want them. Hmm. Do explain. Why would you reach for them? Um, because it's familiar. Even though it's unhealthy, it's familiar. Uh, addressing your own mental health issues, it's easier to hold them in, keep them in, draw them in. It's a lot harder to reach out and tell people, I'm not well. And that's what you said, let me see, when you wrote us, um, you said, my happy flower and tree paintings had grown suddenly darker over the past years, and this next series is as naked and screaming, I am not all right as I can create. Yes, and I, I, I think that you were probably the first stranger or aside from maybe two or three people in my life that I actually felt comfortable just saying that to because I knew I was going to be putting them out there and I I was really quite concerned about how they would be received. If you would describe for me two more of the paintings in that series that, that you think say a lot. Probably the one with the woman with the, the light switch to her right. Mm -hmm. It's based on a photograph, but I added the light switch. Huh. Because for me, what that photograph evoked was a feeling that I had often had, which was if I could just shut this off, I'd be happy to quietly throw this switch. Not dramatically, not violently, just to shut it off permanently. So that's very personal to me. Um, I feel like the one with the golden bombs falling mm -hmm. is also very important to me. It was probably a result of my very bottom, my very low of what was happening through all of this. The chemical compound on the gas mask that that person is wearing in that painting is actually the chemical compound for fentanyl, hmm. which I have not used or tried, but many people in my in my area are dying from that every day. Yeah, they're very powerful, and I didn't even realize the nuance of that, nor did I know the name of the collection. I had to look it up and how to say it. Um, Incidimus is the Latin term for depression, and, and that is what the series is about. It's about my own journey through my own mental health and through some people around me who are experiencing similar, but it's probably the most personal series I've ever done. Mm -hmm. Well, it is the most personal series I've ever done because I just sort of threw it all out there. How did it help to do that? Was there a lightening of the load or a, a lightening of the darkness or anything? Uh, to be completely honest, no. It actually probably took me darker, but whether that just coincided with where I was with my own mental health or whether they fed each other, I'm not sure. Uh, there was a huge lightening of the load when I finally showed them. Mm -hmm. I showed them at a an art walk that has uh, about 8,000 visitors going through over two days. And what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, as the day went on, um, I got everything. I got people really excited and happy that I had put this out there because they identified. I had a lot of people angry that it said it doesn't have a place here. This is a family event Ooh. in terms of, of being out of place, uh, safer kids or whatever. I think it's important kids can understand. Uh, in fact, the kids had no problem with it. Yeah. Kids went up and said, this is what this is. This is what that is. And whether they were right or wrong, they didn't have any preconceptions or judgments mm -hmm. or any stigma. Um, mm -hmm. I did have many people crying. Um, my mm -hmm. friend was coming down two hours in and she said, can I bring you some lunch? And I said, no, but can you bring me a box of Kleenex, please? <laughs> oh. And I went through that box fast, oh. like not myself, from other people. Wow. And they shared stories, correct? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So many people yeah. shared so many stories of yeah. themselves, of family, of friends, of people they had lost or who were suffering um, or were, you know, suffering themselves. And there were lots of hugs I decided mm-hmm. that, you know, that's what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and there was like a one big, huge guy that came up and just started shaking, just shaking. Mm-hmm. And then he turned to me and, uh, gosh, I got a little teared up thinking about this. He just came over, just not verbally crying, but just tears pouring down and gave me a huge hug. And we just stood there for probably, you know, half a minute. Wow. And, uh, then he left, but he sent his entire family to come and see it. And the one girl came over and said, my dad said to come and look at these because then I'll understand what he's going through. Oh, that's intense and beautiful and sad. Yeah, the whole weekend was sort of that way. And uh, that had tied a huge thing of black helium balloons to the top of mm-hmm. one of the paintings. And at the end of the art walk, I, I released all the balloons in the parking lot before I drove home. And it just it was <sighs> felt like something was done and gone and lighter. Oh, tell me more about that. <laughs> about lighter? Yeah, about what you think you released or what it felt like to release it. Or, or were you conscious you had that to release still or that that might be a method by which to release it? I just I want to know more kind of all and none of what you just mentioned (laughs) yeah got it uh when you wrote us you said while you were finishing up those that's that last series the most recent series you were actually listening to the podcast yes i was that surprised me tell me about that um I want to make clear, I'm not saying, like, pat me on the back, because I don't consider any of this me. I consider this the people who are sharing their stories, um, and and we're just the messengers. So with that in mind. Well, both are valuable, right? One needs the other. And and I was really happy to find it. Um, When I found it, I was, um, that day and the day before, I believe, I was in a very, very dark place. I was consciously considering self-harming um it it was ideation but you know i was making plans um you know it was suicidal ideation and i didn't want to reach out to any of my friends i didn't want to reach out to any friend um i do have a girlfriend i didn't want to tell her and so i i just looked because i sometimes listen to podcasts when i paint uh, usually I listen to music, but I thought maybe I'll just see who else is feeling like this right now. And what I typed in was depression and you came up. And so I started listening and the beauty of your podcast is I started finding other voices and other people with familiar stories. And it, it sort of got me through it. Just listening to other people. And that's the point, right, is, is if we can have these conversations. Is it the knowing you're not alone? I think so. I think when I'm in those really dark places, even though I know I'm supposed to reach out to people, I, I scroll through social media or friends lists or telephone numbers, and I don't want to bother anybody. And I don't want to have to explain it again. And so just hearing somebody else was like, especially since they were strangers, it was, it, it, it's liberating to know that you're not alone and you're also, and this is just me personally now, I'm not burdening anybody with my stuff. But I could feel myself, you know, coming down from it or coming out of it just by listening. Wow. Yeah. And hearing other people's stories that maybe I hadn't considered. You know, as much as it's important to acknowledge your own uh, mental health, sometimes just hearing other people can get you out of your own stuff and give you gratitude by understanding what somebody else is going through. One of the most useful things for me has been just hearing how people describe it all. Uh, One of my very favorites... I'll get her name wrong, but I remember the episode. But she said that 
depression lies in a way that makes you believe that what it's saying are previously unacknowledged truths versus symptoms of an illness. And I was just like, that makes sense to me. That I can use to explain to someone else why we believe it. I think what, what that person is describing is right. I mean, addiction and mental health are the diseases that tell you you don't have a disease. Imagine if you had cancer or diabetes, but your brain said, you don't have diabetes or cancer. If everyone would just leave you alone or if everyone would just change, your, your diabetes would be just fine. Wow. What did you learn from that whole art experience? How has it helped you? Um, it helped me address a lot of issues that I was having, that I was then forced to, once I saw them, what they meant to me on canvas, then I was forced to say, yeah, that's real. That's not just in my head. Or I can't bury it. I can't bury this anymore. The intention was to generate conversation and make a statement, which really is the probably the real first time I've ever done that in art. Uh, putting them up uh, allowed me to say to the world, yep, this is me. And so it allowed me to say, that's the end of this period. Not that it's gone, but this is how we're going to deal with it moving forward. And, and that's what I'm trying to do now. Even my next series is connected to it. It's about, it's about how I'm healing myself. And, and how are you healing yourself? Um, with love. Hmm. Starting with um, myself. That pretty much says it all. With love, starting with myself. Jeff will be back next week to share with us the story behind his paintings. You can see Jeff's paintings at both his website, which we will link to, as well as our own website and Facebook page, Giving Voice to Depression and givingvoicetodepression.com. Bye, Bridge. Bye, Terry. We truly hope that our podcast brings a little more understanding, helps you better articulate your experience of depression, or better understand how to support someone else's. We invite you to join us for daily posts on the Giving Voice to Depression Facebook page and on Twitter and Instagram at Voice Depression. It is a comfort to be among fellow travelers on depression's dark road. And remember, if you're struggling, speak up. If someone else is, listen up.